MD from Kerala, India. Is a hadith about shaking hands with women about iron needle authentic. I heard some da'is in USA say it's weak. I only know that the hadith is authentic. HK from Manchester, UK. Salaamu alaikum. And at the end of the day, even if it was da'if, you open up the door for men to shake women's hand or, or men to shake women's hands. What's next? What well, remains? Give her a hug. Give her a kiss on the cheek. Why not? It's just business. It's cordial. It's my culture. We shake hands. We give a kiss on the cheek. We give a hug. What's the big problem? You pull your hand back from the woman. And you smell your hand later on. Mm, that perfume was really sweet. Her cheek on my cheek. Her cheek was really soft. Tender face. All right. She gave me a hug. Her breasts, it felt really good on my chest. Her hair was really long, etc., etc., etc. It's a muscular. Mahram touching a non mahram woman, period. It's a problem. And it's only going to lead to further problems. Period. So many people, they focus on one thing and they ignore other things. If the hadith was da'if, where do you want to go with it? We can now shake people's hands, women's hands, and they can shake men's hands. Where do you want to go with it? Where does it stop? Some people to say, oh, if you don't shake a woman's hand in a business meeting or job interview, she'll consider you to be rude. Okay. What do you do when you meet uh, people who say, give me a hug too? That's also rude. Then what? Let's hold hands while we walk down the street. Let's go out for lunch together and just me and you. So it's extremely dangerous. Okay. And oftentimes, many people, they want to you know, challenge certain established things through quote unquote scholastics or scholarship. Not because of scholarship, but because of desire. And they want to fit in. And if you don't believe so, then just look at the pattern. The beard doesn't have to be long. It can be trimmed up. What's more pleasing to the non-Muslims? What's more scary to the non-Muslims? A big Taliban, ISIS beard, terrorist beard. Or a nice, trimmed up, fuzzed up, lined up, shaped up beard. Which of the two is more acceptable and those colleges and places of business. Which are the two? We all know. You don't have to wear a thobe. Rather, you shouldn't wear a thobe in America. It's not from your culture. It's not from the prophet, etc., etc., etc. Sheikh Sam said this. Sheikh Fulan said this. Blah, 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 blah. No problem. What is more acceptable to the kuffar? Pants or a thobe? What causes them more fear? He's an extremist. He's a Taliban. He's this, he's that. Which of the two? Pants being above the ankles. It's not obligatory. The scholars say this. You don't have to. Care. It's not from your culture, etc. Et no problem. Let's. From a scholastic point of view, if that's what you feel from your research, what blends in with the kuffar more? Pants beneath the ankles like every other Tom, Dick, and Harry? Or pants above the ankles? Women don't have to wear niqab. They shouldn't wear niqab. There's no proof of wearing niqab. No mushkila. What blends in more? The sister with her face out? Or the sister with the Taliban, ISIS, niqab? Terrorists. We all know the answer. And shaking a woman's hands. And doing this. And going to a church. And interfaith. And kether. And kether. And kether. And kether. And kether. And the next thing you know, there's no distinction between you and them. The next thing you know, you can just fit in and blend in with them. And no one would know or tell that you're a Muslim. And they keep chipping away, chipping away, and chiseling away at your deen for worldly gain. And that's a fact. And the same applies to different opinions on scholastics, with regards to aqidah, with regards to takfir, with regards to jihad, with regards to this and that. They keep watering and shaving it down. To be more and more Americanized, Westernized, and more accepted in the circles. And it's very unfortunate. So be careful. And we've spoken this many times before. It's not just an issue of, oh, the hadith is da'if. It's deeper than that. Wallahu alam.